Hello guys and welcome in a new video of the TTL3 channel. Today we will cover active active clustering on Palo Alto network firewall. I know this is a topic a lot of people try to avoid, but honestly it provides great flexibility when it comes to dynamic routing and traffic asymmetry. We will use this diagram for the example where my two standalone firewall, firewall 1 and firewall 2, route traffic using BGP with two different ISP, ISP1 and ISP2. When dealing with BGP and different internet providers, customers usually want to get profit of the two links and be fully in control of the upstream and downstream traffic, like in this picture. The problem is that firewalls are usually very bad candidate for such design. Why? Because they need to keep track of session and will drop packet if there is inconsistency in the TCP exchange, like we see on the picture here where there is an asymmetry and the returning packet from the server to the client is going to be dropped by firewall number two. By putting the two firewalls in the same active-active cluster, you can solve this problem. The two firewalls will share the same configuration while having different routes and interface settings. Let's have a look to see what happened now. When the first packet of a session hit firewall number one, a session synchronization message will be sent to firewall two via the HA tooling. This message informs Firewall 2 that Firewall 1 is the owner of a new session involving the client. Now, when the returning traffic hit Firewall number 2, it is aware of this existing session and will send a second packet to the session owner via the HA3 link. Let's have a look to the configuration and see the major differences with a traditional active passive firewall. First of all, in the high ability section, my clustering mode is set to active active. Like any other form of cluster, I did set up an HA1 link for configuration synchronization and an HA2 link for session synchronization. The major differences are in the active active configuration section. We have an HA3 interface to allow traffic asymmetry between the two chassis like we saw on the diagram. I did not enable VRSync on purpose because I want the two devices to make their own routing decision based on BGP. Finally, we set up the session owner and session setup in first packet mode. What it means is that the device receiving the first packet will be 100% responsible for the packet processing. Although this is not an optimal solution in terms of performance, it is a very predictable way to handle the traffic in such setup. So that's it for this video, guys. You now have a good idea on how leveraging active active clustering in a dynamic routing environment. I hope you enjoyed the video and please share and subscribe if you liked it.